Welcome to Narrow at the James Bill. Hope you're well, thanks for joining me. Today is a first for me. I am welding. So I, I've got to go and get myself some either steel box or bar or something like that uh, to make up a rectangular frame, which is going to be the upper bunk in the midship's cabin. There's a few things to consider though on this one. Okay, so just to remind you, the bunk is going to be suspended around this kind of height. It's going to fall down when it's in its lower position. And then, uh, so kind of, I can use this area, I can see out the window and everything. Um, and then it can be hinged up for usage, basically. Um, so it's obviously going to have to cover the same area as the lower bunk, albeit slightly narrower. Um, and the reason I'm gonna make it out of steel is because it needs to be really strong. Um, and it's gonna be quite expensive to do that at timber as well and to make it strong. So steel's the way to go. Um, the main consideration I've got to, with regardless of how the, what, what material the bed's made from, is the weight of the actual frame when someone is on it um, and mounting it here is going to be fine I can I can carry that weight the problem is going to be on this side here where it's hinged um, because even though I've got a lot of expanse to mount enough hinges to it and, and support it or whatever it is whatever I'm doing basically it's going through nine mil ply in some points, it'll be going through a 25 mil batten, which is only stuck onto the side of the boat. Um, and in other areas, it wouldn't be as, as good like here. That is just going to be nine mil ply. And if there was a lot of weight on that, you know, even if you had quite a few screws on it, it's just not going to be, I don't know, it's going to be a little bit vulnerable, I'd say. I just don't think I'm going to get a strong enough mounting on there. Um, so the way i'm going to do that is to take this board off which does seem like a bit of a palaver because i've got to take the door the wall apart but i've got to take this board off and then weld on some brackets onto the steel wall probably one maybe there another one there and another one at the end um, and then i can mount the bed to those brackets so basically a little slot coming out of the wall um, with a little bracket coming out of it um, with a hole in it and I can slot the bed through that and then it's you know that's that that's going nowhere and also it'll save me quite a lot of money on hinges because to carry the weight of this there are hinges that will do it I could use gas struts and all sorts of things to kind of keep keep it propped up and to uh, help with the weighting of it but uh, it's all quite expensive, so the cheapest way to do it is just going to be to take this off, weld some bits on, put it back on, and hopefully that'll work. Um, I'm going to have to also take that board off to get one on there, maybe, unless I go for that area there, that one there, that one there, and just kind of forego the last six inches or something. I'm not sure. I'll have to think about that. But right now, I've got to go and get myself some steel to make the bed frame. I'm wondering whether I should go for angle iron like that, which makes it kind of a quite an easy base, but possibly harder for me to weld, I'm not sure. Um, or steel box like that, which that one there looks quite thin though. That's quite a thin wall. Maybe that's a, a mill thickness. Whereas that's probably what, maybe three mil. I'll see what they got. That's probably a tad too chunky. That box there might be doable. That looks a bit of a thicker wall. Maybe that might be two mil. Oh yeah, hang on, now we're talking. That stuff might be right. That looks pretty decent. They got enough of it. Right, after some Friendly advice from uh, the chap here from 
steel fast, I've settled on some angle iron. Well, happy days. I've got two lengths of 25 inch, and I've got two lengths of 74 inch, and a bit of offcut. And the nice chap cut it up for me in the right uh, sizes. So I've got two 25 inch ones there to go across there. And then I've got two lengths of 75 inches to go across, oh, without scratching the walls too much, to go across like that. So, what I need to do is mitre the ends of all these, put 45 degree on it, make up a jig, uh, go outside, set the welder up, and then uh, give it some practice shots, welds, whatever the word is. Yeah, let's do this. Right, so the jig I'm going to use is a bit of the old kitchen, some of the old offcuts from there. Um, if I might have those two off, I'll be able to clamp those two, line them up so I got it on the right angle, uh, clamp them on so they're not going to budge anywhere, and that gives me the area to weld in. I'll just do that obviously outside. Right, I think I've got all the bits I need. I've got power, I've got the welder and the welding rods got my angle grinder, got my jigsaw, uh, I've got a load of clamps and stuff and some cutting oil and I've just had a, well annoyingly, sweary Dan has gone out for the day, he said he'll be back later but I need to kind of make tracks on this now. So I, I asked his opinion on a couple of things, the opinion was should the bed frame basically be like that so the, sl so the slats sit on there or should it be like that so the slats sit on there and his opinion was that so it would look nicer my other question to dan was should i mitre them um for a, you know what's basically going to be the best the better seal or so the better join if i was to mitre them like a wood join and bring them in together like that and he said no uh, what i've got to do is cut out this bit here whatever it is, measure that properly. And then that piece then sits inside there and then I can weld there, 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 um, round the back there and underneath it. So um, that was his opinion. So I'm gonna cut that bit out, cut um, and uh, what else did he say to do? Oh yeah, he said to profile it down like a V. So when I'm welding, so instead of it being just like a line across there and the weld sits on top of it and then I grind it back and most of it disappears, if I was to channel that out a little bit like a V, then, the, then all of that can fill with molten metal and it makes it much stronger. So, let's crack on. Right, here's my setup. Uh, that's what I'm gonna weld. Okay, let's give this a go. Oh, I haven't turned it on. Right, I can see like fuck all through this. And I'm scared that thing's gonna smack me in the face. Yeah, it does not like that, does it? Let's try again. Bloody hell. Right, it must be something in the settings. After consulting with my welder on the phone, Sweary Dan tells me that this welder needs to be kind of wound up. Anyway, I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'm going to wait for him. Oh, happy days. Dan has returned, uh, but so has the rain. So this is going to be short lived outside.
I was all up for doing the welding on this bed frame, but my welder wasn't quite playing ball. So Dan's using his welder and uh, he doesn't really, really want me to use it. So he's cracking on. Anyway, why have a dog and bark yourself, eh? Right, sweary Dan thinks we should put one in the middle. I've only got enough for one. Ideally, we'd have a couple of kind of diagonals, um, but anyway, one's better than nothing. So across there, but this is this is looking pretty pretty good, pretty rigid. So I've got the slat, got the slats to go on the other side of that. Um, but yeah, happy with that. Perfect, mate. Thank you very, very Thank much. Well, good morning. Uh, Dan's left his welder and grinder on board, which is good news because, well, I've got to clear this area, which is annoying because it only stayed like that for about two days. I've got to somehow dismantle this wall and all that stuff so I can take off this board here and then we can start to look at where to fix the brackets to the wall. Oh dear. Right, I've managed to slide the wall out. Now I've just got to move it enough so I can get the board out without kind of taking the door and everything down, which would be a bit of a result. Uh, so take that batten off there, unscrew it all, and it should pop out and slide out that way. And there's the frame kind of fits in nicely. Obviously it's not, doesn't brush up against the walls or at least I bloody hope it doesn't. Um, so yeah, why is that not sitting square? Oh, it's because it's up on that angle there. Right, yeah, so this is hopefully gonna be all square. Looks like it is. Um, and then, right, so yeah, let's get rid of this wall unscrew that and then start thinking about where those two brackets should go <coughs> i think i'm gonna have to basically put one there i don't really want to take that board off at all so yeah one there and then one there maybe one in the middle as well right all the screws are out of this board uh and yet it's still up on the wall i think the three coats of varnish I've put on it, I've kind of helped bond it to certain bits. So I'm gonna have to kind of prise this off. Right, I got the board off. Hmm, now I've got to work out the positions for the brackets. The wall came up in line with the top of that. So, I can excavate something in there, possibly, and get a bracket welded on there. Uh, I'm wondering though, whether it'd be possible just to weld straight onto there. Uh, Cause then I could have it the same, just kind of back and forth. I might have to leave this now and see uh, what Dan thinks. Right, that's the kind of thing we're going to look at. So it's going to be a P shape. So it rests on that bit of angle iron there, or the box section inside the wall. Um, and it comes up so we can weld down that side there and down and across there and on the other side. Wall comes up there and then there's the hole coming out there, which would be the pivot point. So if I'm going to do the whole bracket in 50, 50 mil um, width, 
and I think I'll be able to get an M10 or an M8 bolt or something through there. So I've excavated these two areas so we can yeah, weld a bracket coming down there, sorry, yeah, up there, and then the P-shape coming out there so it's as near to this as I can. And then we're going to need a couple of these things mounted to the side of the frame of the bed. So having marked up the two P-shaped brackets on the bit of steel, um, Dan's going in with a pilot before making a bigger hole on the larger piece of steel before we cut it up. Right, here's uh, the new angled bracket. So that's going to go on there like that. And it now sticks out enough for the timber and that. It's bloody hot, that thing. Anyway, so yeah, two of those got to um, shape it now and just get rid of the, uh, the edges around there. Dan's just cleaning up the area to weld to. So we're going to have it flush up against the wall there and there's a little bit of packing do at the bottom there. This is what you can see through the welding mask. So it's got a filter in it. So when you're welding, it, this is what you can see. So you can see that what you're welding. And when you stop, you see everything again. It's well clever. Right, the brackets are on. So the idea is when that board goes back on, I've basically got that to play with on the outside for something to uh, hinge around. So what we're gonna do is make up a couple of Ds to go either side of that on the bed and for it to be able to pivot like that. Right, we've offered the bed up and marked out where um, the bracket's coming off the wall. So we just want put one up against there, maybe allowing a maybe a mill or two tolerance either side, a bit of gap. Uh, I could always put like a rubber washer in there or a nylon washer or something like that. So yeah, that'd be a fair. Right, while Stan's making the D brackets, I've got to cut out these two holes. So whilst Dan is finishing doing those D brackets, I'm going to see if I can get this wall back up. I've cut out the little uh, holes to take in those brackets. brackets on and they're all nicely aligned. So yeah, this is going to work alright. Now it's going to... We want to just off of this shit, don't yeah, we? Yeah, I'll, I'll hold it, mate. You, uh... You've got a really old steel done, mate. Yeah, I will. Now I've got the mask on. Right, we've tacked it in place. Now we're going to go for a full wheel. I'll need to go. Bring it this one. Right, the wall's back in, which is a relief, and so is that wall, which is again a relief. Um, I cut the holes okay for these bits. There's a little bit too much on there, but you're not gonna see it, basically, because the bed's gonna be covering it all. That one there's quite nice. However, I haven't got much room on this one because the wall's being pulled in there and pulled in there, and it's kind of bowing out a little bit. If I push it in, I've actually got a little bit more play, and I'm hoping once I've got the bed in, the bed rounded bit on there is gonna push that little bit in. On there, I'm fine, I've got enough to play with. So what I need to do now, Dan has left, I need to um, finish these up by grinding them back so they're nice and rounded to make them into Ds. I've rounded them down, as you can see. Now I'm going to offer it up and see if this works. I've taken quite a bit off that one to compensate for um, the closeness of the timber. Right, I've got my bag of bolts here. I think I need, I've cut it to an 11. 
so I can get a 10 through there. I presume that's a 10. Oh, that's quite a nice. Bit of a tricky one to do with an Allen key. What else have I got in here? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. They're the right fit. Right, let's see if I've got another one of those. Here we go. Happy days. Right. Now, I just need probably, like, ideally, a nylon washer or something like that. Um, hmm. Before I worry about any of that, I'm going to uh, see if it all fits and works. Right, that's that's not going to work. Uh, no, problems. I reckon that one will. Oh no, that one's not even going to. Yes, we're in the upright position, I think. Maybe if I can squeeze this one in. No. Bollocks. That's not many miles off. I could put a screw through or a welding rod. the problem here then because it's kind of working yeah that would work um, it's really a case of getting that in but then that still that's kind of cutting into that bit of wall weirdly it looked like it would work on that end hmm It's a shame because that's kind of works really well. If only it was a bit further out. That's not particularly easy to do, I don't think. I don't think there's much room on this one to cut away of it. And even if I can, I don't think I can get to it. Looks like that wall's bending out that way, which is not helping. Right now, I'm thinking if I was to grind back this top edge here, which is the edge which is hitting the wall, and take a mill or two off that all the way up, uh, it might fit in. Right, I can start to see the difference being made here. So, I'm just grinding this back. So, I've taken off at the moment that was the original length. So at the moment I've taken off kind of about a mil and a half, two mil. Right, this is take two.
Got myself a thin bolt. Got a thin bolt on this. I'm wondering whether that wall needs to come off and this I reckon I could probably drill a bit more out of that out of the bracket which would give me a bit more room without I mean the only other thing I could do is then get Dan round and have to redo that bracket but I'm reckoning it's not far off. If I was to take off another, I don't know if I could get a drill bit into it. I don't know what I've got. That might have to be the solution. Right, I might be able to sneakily get around the back of that there and drill out some of that hole. Basically, I want to be bringing it closer to, oh God, closer to this side. Right, I've drilled it out some more. There's definitely quite a lot more play in there. So that, whether it gives me enough wriggle room or not, is yet to be seen. I now need to put that board back. Right, third time lucky. Okay. I think it's now snagging on that wall there Whoa. and not on this hinge oh, it's a bit of both it was sagging on the hinge oh my word this is turning into such a job uh, all right, I'm going to see if I can excavate a little bit of timber behind there, but doesn't, sorry, a little bit of spray foam behind there, but it doesn't seem to be that much, to be honest. Right, I think I've managed to bring it in a little bit. So let's put the walls back on and offer it up again. That's hanging down, all right. <coughs> that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And then up. And then down. Okay, so I just need a stopper at the bottom there to fix that on. And obviously it's gonna have the mattress and all that stuff on it as well. And go up, lock in place, lock in place. What I'll do is see if I can get a bigger bolt in there and it still work. Uh, let's get a bigger bolt. We'll take it. Okay, M8 it is. Oh, what a result. Yeah, I'm well happy with that. As long as I manage to clamp it securely on these bits here, um, using a cantilever, I reckon will be the way to go on that. This is absolutely spot on. So what I'm gonna do now is take it off, uh, clean it up, paint it, uh, and then go on with some better bolts and some kind of nylon washers in between there. 
so it's not rattling as much. And that is good. Then I can go on with the slats. And then that's kind of done. Just need the mattress on it then. And then work out the way of hinging it up here. Maybe lock it in place or something. And then I can test it. Happy days. Thank you very much, Dan, for all your help on this one, pal. Thank you very much for watching. Until tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.